top of the morning to you. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> My goofball is obviously had some coffee in him. Hey, Matt. Yes. Okay. Thank you for joining us. We have, we're fogged in? Clouded in. Yeah. Yeah. It'll burn off soon enough. It's a little chilly start here. Thank you for joining us. It is June 17th, 2023. Ready to get the weekend started. Love it. Okay. Today's devotional is called Sonship from 1 John 3, 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Oh my God. Yeah. You have some great content related to being a child of God. I don't know if there's anything on your heart you want to share before we conclude today. but Sure. Okay. You're also going to be... Well, actually... That was from 1 John 3. You're going to be in John 1. Yes. Just regular John. Not the the triple Johns. So, so when you're in Luke and you read chapter 3, it goes into the lineage of Jesus at the end of the chapter. Yes. And then the chapter ends with verse 38, which it says, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. The first time I read that, I realized that, yeah, I mean, I've heard that I'm a child of God because I'm saved, but we're all children of God, which was the son of God. So it all started as God, the father. That's just awesome. Okay. Mm. So I was just thinking of how, like, you know, we take pride in our name, like our last name, right? Yeah. We take pride in our last name. Um, and sometimes we display our coat of arms. Mm. Like in my house growing up, I had a coat of arms displayed on, I think, our living room. And uh, so I was just reflecting when you're reading that, like we get, we take pride in our, especially our last name, right? Mm. And how much greater is it that we yeah, yeah. can carry his name? Yeah. Woo! Okay, so I'm one through 13. You are, yeah. I got a quick Thanks for read. keeping me on track. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was the word. <laughs> And the beginning was the word, and then there was Adam. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Let me just say this real quick. The name John means gift of God. Okay, He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He mm. came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. <laughs> I was just marinating on some things when you were reading that, so it's all good stuff. So we got we got some meat today. We have a full two pager, so you're gonna have to bear with me. <laughs> bear with me a little bit. Good thing I got my coffee in me so far. God has done something marvelous for the believer. He has taken him out of the world. It is a remarkable word that Jesus said, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. They are not of the world. Mm. John 17, 15 and 16. It is a great truth for us to understand. In this glorious position of God's own. Did you hear that? Mm. We are positioned. Mm. Mm. In this glorious position of God's own, we come to a place where we know with confidence, we say it without fear of contradiction from our own hearts or even outside voices. Beloved, now we are children of God. 1 John 3, 2. I want to examine ourselves in the light of the word. God has definitely purposed that we should inherit all of the scriptures, but we must meet the requirements necessary to claim them. Smith has got, he's got some meat on the bone for us today. This is good stuff, people. 
we must meet the requirements necessary to claim them. Remember this, there are any number of things you may quote without possessing the essential reality of them. I want us to have something more than the literal word. Words are of no importance unless the believer has the assurance of the abiding of those words. You can quote the words of scripture without being in the place of victory. Oh. <laughs> you could look like a big, beautiful, bushy fig tree, but produce no fruit. Yep. You can look like a Christian. You can look awesome. You can look like a believer. You can act like, but you, you're not producing nothing. Yeah. Just so that, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Fruit is important, people. Fruit is important. You could produce sour fruit. Bitter fruit, unfruitful fruit. <laughs> Any person who has come to the place of this word, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. First John 4, 4 is mightier than all the powers of darkness, mightier than the power of disease, mightier than his own self. There is something reigning supremely great in him more than in the world when he is in that place. We must come to the place of knowledge. It is not sufficient for you to quote the word of God. You never come to a place of righteousness and truth until you are in possession of the promises contained in the word. Mm. Beloved, God wants us to be something more than ordinary people. That means we're extraordinary. Right. <laughs> Remember this. If you are ordinary, you have not reached the ideal principles of mm. God. The only thing that God has for a man is to be extraordinary. Mm. I didn't even read ahead. I didn't read ahead, folks. <laughs> God has no room for an ordinary man. There are millions of ordinary people in the world. But when God takes hold of a man, he makes him extraordinary in personality, power, thought, and activity. Beloved, now we are children of God. 1 John 3, 2. It is a divine plan fashioned by his divine will. God has not given anything that he does not mean for us to attain. Wow. We are thinking way too small. He has a lot for us. God means for us to possess all these things. Beloved, now we are children of God. God has such purposes to perform in us that he has a great desire to utter these words in our hearts so that we may rise, so that we may claim, that we may be ambitious, that we may be covetous for these purposes, that there may be something in us that nothing can satisfy unless, not only to unless we not only toe the line, but we also live in the line and claim the whole thing as ours. Mm. It's like... How do I want to say this? We are not to be greedy and selfish, right? It's not just for our own selfish purpose. It's to pour out on others. Yes. Okay. So when we claim the whole thing as ours, it's not for us to keep. Mm. If that makes sense. It's not to puff us up. It's to it's, glorify him. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for helping me out there. Making disciples. Yeah. Well, you. Multiplying. You want them to bear fruit too, right? Yeah. I mean, think of your kids if you have children, right? Like you want the best for them. You want them to produce the best that they can produce, right? That's how we need to look at our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Okay. You will never reach ideal purposes in any way unless you become the living epistle of the word by the power of the Holy Spirit. You become the living force of the revelation of God. Mm -hmm. The incarnation of the personality of his presence in the human soul. Then you know that you are his children. Look at Christ. He is the most beautiful of all. He is utterly glorious, passionate for God, filled with all the fullness of God. He came to earth in the glory of the majesty of his father, and he stood in the earth in human form. I like to think about the manifestation of the power of God. God came and resided in flesh in weakness under the law for you. Mm. He came in human form, worshipped in it, lived in it, and moved in it. Some even recognized him as the Son of God. Beloved, there is the principle, the remarkable position of every soul is to be so inhabited by Jesus 
as to become a living personality of God's ideal son. It is very remarkable and beautiful. God has these divine plans for us. So many people believe that because they are in the flesh, they are always to be in the place of weakness. Friends, your weaknesses have to be swallowed up with the ideal of him who never failed. Every time he was tried, he came out victorious. That's a good example for us. I need that. I need to hear that today. He was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15 The purpose for his temptations was so that he might be able to help all who were tempted and tried and oppressed in any way. He was the great embodiment of God to human life. He came to expose our weaknesses so that we might behold his mightiness. Through him, we can be strong in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thought for today, it is always all right when he is almighty. Mm. So what are challenges, trials and tribulations we go through no matter what? On the other end, it's a win. No matter what happens, it's a win on the other end. Every single time he wins. <laughs> See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.